5 and 17. And while you're turning, I will pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you, God. God, thank you for bringing us out here tonight, God. Thank you for letting us not wanting to just know your word, but wanting to grow in your word, God. I ask that you allow us, God, to grow in this word, God. Change our lives, God. Let something that comes out of my mouth, God, help somebody change their life. God, let it be a life-changing word, God. I ask that I completely decrease and that you increase, God. I ask that you take over, God. I ask that you take the driver's seat, God. I ask that you come into this house, and God, and work away, work your thing. Do what you do, God, and we appreciate you, God, for We appreciate you for allowing us to come back to you again, God. We appreciate you for allowing us to pray to you, God. We appreciate you, God, for being chosen. God, we ask that you continue to touch our pastor, touch the man of this house, God. Continue to allow us to follow as he gets a vision, God. Let us be able to follow at all times, God. And we ask that you touch each and every individual inside this house, God, from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, God. If it needs to be changed, change it, God. Remove all wrong and multiply all right. In your son Jesus' name, I ask these things. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The title of our lesson is speaking about what you used to be. It's not a decree. Speaking about what you used to be is not a decree. Whom did we used to be before we gave our lives over to Christ? Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Whom did we used to be before we gave our lives over to Christ? We were sinners. Christ died for us while we were still sinners, which is to say that Christ didn't die for perfect and put together. As if there are any such people. He died for the weak. He died for the wicked. He died for the broken. He died for the rebellious. He died for the ungodly. He died for the enemies of his kingdom. So what is that to boast about? What is that to brag about? So the first thing that we were before we committed our lives to God was we were sinners. The second thing, we were enemies. Enemies of God. Revelation 3 and 16 says, so then because thou art lukewarm, we always want to have a foot in church and a foot in the world. Because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. What is that to talk about? Who loves me walks around talking about when they were my enemy. What is that to brag on? Be careful of boasting on how good of a sinner you were. Be careful of giving it credit. Who did we used to be before we gave our lives over to Christ? We were sinners. We were the enemy. We were disrespectful. When you speak of it, you compliment the devil. You give him a front row seat in your life. Words are powerful. Don't speak it. It does not profit you. It brings you no reward and it insults God. If it is not to a prelude to a testimony, why is it part of your conversation? If I let it go, why do I keep bringing it back up? If you are truly done with it, why does it flow out of your mouth so easily? It shouldn't come to you as well. I ask God, let me forget it. So when folks, did you ever know? I don't, I don't remember. 
remember doing none of that now. I really can't. I can't put my mind to set right on if I ever did this now. I don't, no, not really. Why? Because I've asked God to take it away from me. I don't want to remember things that you did against me. I sure don't want to remember the stuff I did against me. So why am I asking to remember these things? Why do I speak them? Who am I trying to impress with them? What are you doing meeting folks in the world and trying to tell them I outworld you at one time? The only person you gonna meet is the Christian. And when I see it, hear it, I don't care if I drink more than you, smoke more than you, snort it more than you. I don't care if I lay it around more than you, baby. You ain't never gonna hear me say it. So whatever you get is gonna be from somebody else and third parties, you can never depend on them. Because they only know what somebody else told them. I don't care if they feel like they had a front row seat. I don't care if he told you. I know what I'm talking about. I was with her. He was one dude. You was with one dude, too. Stop tripping. And then think about it. I was with her. Think about how many other folks he been with. Is he really a reliable source? Could he be used in court against me? then why are we listening to what went on past in the past with somebody else? And why are we speaking of ours? It's not a decree. You don't want the problems that your past can bring you. So don't talk like you do. This, it's not the smoke you want. Anytime you compliment your past life, you give praise to the devil. This is why you hear people say, but for the grace of God. What we used to be is not a decree, but it was temporary. God never planned for sin to be your end. Romans 8 and 29 says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Another translation says it like this. It says, for God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Your past was temporary. And I don't really like to talk about stuff that I ain't stay in too long. Did you go to school then? Mm. Yeah, yeah, it ain't even on my record. Put it off your record. Ask them to relieve you of it. Get rid of it. You don't want that past following you. So how did we become the brothers and the sisters? Go to Romans 8, 15 through 17. It says, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. This is how we became the brothers and the sisters. We were adopted under the New Testament through the death and resurrection of Christ. Through the death and resurrection of Christ. So if we be part of the life that we are now in, we don't have to keep speaking about the life we were in. First Peter 2 and 9 says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Who gives us the right to make a decree? 
God is listed as King of Kings. Revelation 19 and 16 says, and he saw on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As king, he has the authority to issue royal decrees. What I love about it is that he has given us the same authority. God being our authority and our father gives us the same inheritance that was given to Jesus. Jesus being our big brother in our Lord and Savior gave us authority to speak on faith alone. Matthew 21 and 21 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which was done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now, how do we make a decree? A decree is an official order or decision. It is an order. It is not a question. It's an official order. That means it has to be followed. We're not saying God if it be your will, that is a request. We have been taught how to pray, but we pray asking God for what we want, a prayer request. A decree is not a prayer. A decree is a command. It's established in faith. It stands on its own. It's stated in the present. Matthew 21 and 19, it says, And when he saw the fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. And he said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth and forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. A decree is an order. I'm not asking you for nothing. I'm telling you what I want. I'm telling you what you're going to do. We have a healthy fear of God, so we are careful in how we speak to him. When you make a decree, you are not giving God an order. You are ordering your desires to come to fruition. You are loosing that which was bound. You are just loosing your stuff. It is possible because if you read Mark 11 and 24, it says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. When you pray, you can receive them that way also, but a decree is not a prayer. You're not talking to God when you're decreeing something. When you're decreeing something, you're speaking to the something. You're telling that thing, you are going to do what I'm telling you to do. You're no longer going to do what you've been doing for me. This is how we're going to make this change. It's a command. It's stated. It's not asked. It's not one of those, um, three of them? God, I think I want three of them. You know, mm -mm. That's not how you say it. Remember, my desires are my wants on steroids. What I desire is way deeper than what I want. I want a new car. I desire the 2023 Cadillac Escalade. It's different. It's different. Say, I want a new car. But I desire the 2023 Cadillac Escalade fully loaded. I, I'm just telling about me. I can only tell you about what I desire. I want it black on black on black. I want the seats to be heated. I want the rear view camera. See, my desires are different. I can name my desires. My wants, 
I can just, you know, I can, I can say them, but they, they sound like I want something. They sound like I'm begging. You got $20? I could really use $20. But my desires don't say, you got $20? I could really use $20. My desire said, this is going to be my car right here. That 2023 Cadillac Escalade, that's what I'm going to drive. It's going to be black on black on black. I'm going to step out of it like I know you didn't know it was coming, but I knew it was coming because I've been claiming it for a minute. But see, a claim is not a decree. A decree is a statement made in the present. In other words, I speak of it now like I got it. I talk about stuff, people be like, this car? No, girl. No, not this thing. I'm talking about the car. I'm talking about my car. You got to be different when you make a decree. My desires are not my needs. I need a lot of stuff for everybody to do. That ain't what I'm desiring. I can have them if I receive them in my mind first. That's why I already got the car, because I received it here. When I step into the one I get in, I already see the one I'm getting in. When I step into the one I get in, I already see the one I'm getting in, because I received it here. It was already received in my mind. Once you receive it in your mind, you can have it in your hand. But in order to do one, you have to do the other. In order for this to happen, I have to state it plainly. This is why we have a vision board night. This Saturday night is important. See, Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. You don't just write it down and walk away. You go back to it and you read it. You go back to it and you state it. You state it in the present. How can I receive? In order to receive, I have to realize all I have to do is desire. Again, Mark 11, 24. Go to part C. Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. This is significant. It says that before I get it, I have to believe that I receive it. Then I receive it. Why do vision boards really work? Let's talk about it. They allow us to see ourselves and what we desire. I know I have it because I saw myself in it. Better than that, I know I have it because I buy stuff for it. When you start buying furniture for your new house, that's when you receive it. When you start buying floor mats for your new car, that's when you received it. When you buy clothes for your new career, you received it. In order to have it, you must receive it. Go buy the baby some clothes. What baby? That baby that you've been talking about. Go buy the baby some clothes. Name the baby. I got a child that named her kids when she was 15 years old. She ain't had a child to this day. Talking about now, I don't even know if I'm going to have any more, but I hate to disappoint her. You called on two, two definitely coming. They definitely going to show up. Because, see, we don't realize that what we speak out of our mouth, we make already, we make it so. Because... Children, that's why I tell you all the time, get the mind of a child, ask for things like they do. Because when you say things like they do, it's no thought to it. They will tell you in a minute what they gonna do. Why? Because they haven't been told they can't do it. They haven't been seen, they don't, they don't think about the hard work that it takes to get it. All they know is I want it, and I'm gonna call on it. And that's what they do. We have a habit of not doing that. You got to purchase the wardrobe for that career. In order to receive, I have to believe it in my mind. In other words, I have to get it here. I got to get it here. I got to be set with it. That's how I can describe that car to you. I got it here. 
I can describe my house to you. I got it here. If you ain't got no husband, you should be able to describe to describe your husband to me. If you really want one. Now I'm just being serious. I want a husband and my husband's gonna treat me like a queen and I'm gonna reciprocate and treat him like a king. He gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. That's a different kind of, see now I done walked into some stuff. You gotta walk into it. The reason why it works for the world and it doesn't work for us is this. Biblical principle does not change. They believe in vision boards but have never read the scripture. Write the vision, make it plain. They ain't read that. They believe in them though. What is on your vision board? They believe in manifestation, Proverbs 18 and 21. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my words be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. They believe that you can speak things into existence. Because biblical principle works, there are some exceptions to every rule. Biblical principle works. So there are exceptions to every rule. I've already told you before that when you are decreeing things, you can't decree stuff that don't belong to you. That makes no sense. I stated, you can't decree Sister Tiffany's husband. I want Brother Harvey as my husband. You can't do that because that's Sister Tiffany's husband. You can't call on stuff that ain't yours. But there are some rules that are broken. I ain't saying you better get Tiffany's husband. Calm down. Slow it down. But let's say that you did not know that a particular person was married. So you innocently say, Lord, make this my husband. Then you find out that he's married. You move forward with your life, never thinking of that thing again. And later in life, his circumstances change. Y'all meet each other again, and y'all get married. It wasn't because you decreed that you wanted to marry the person. It was because God don't forget nothing. It was because God heard you. He knew the future, and he predicted, okay, you won't get them, but you won't get them now. You won't get them later on. You ain't even going to be thinking about it when you do get them. Nick Cannon said he was 17 or 18 years old when he said, I'm going to marry Mariah Carey. He was 30-something when he married her. You got to realize that you can speak your future if you are innocent in your coming. My son, when he was 10 years old, told my husband and I, I'm going to play for the NFL so that I can pay for Lyric's college. Lyric is just one of his 15 nieces and nephews. He was like, I'm going to pay for her to go to college. I told my husband the other day, I said, he's going to pay for her to go to college. I said, it may not be through the NFL, but he spoke that at 10. It was an innocent comment. It wasn't like, I'm going to be so bad. It was just like, I just want to help my niece out. When you are innocent in your comment, it happens because you were innocent and warning him, but intentional in moving forward. Circumstances move within biblical principle. God remembered you. You can, remember, you can receive it if you believe in what you want. You receive it in your mind, you can get it in your hands. Pastor Connor said it this way. He said, decree it and you will see it. Romans 4 and 17 says, it is written that I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickens the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. You got to call things which are not as though they were. Not only that, you have to claim it to obtain it. You have to receive it.
to get it. You have to receive it first. Receive it. Receive it. Believe that you receive and you shall have them. Let me give you some hard truths. Biblical principle works without ever mentioning God's name. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Where are you sending your words? Stop wasting words on things that do not prosper you. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Those of the world use biblical principle more than most Christians. They decree the prophecy. Matthew 21 and 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I, verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done, to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. He said it, he said, say it, not pray it. He said, say it. He didn't say pray this. He said, if you say it, I'm going to give you the realest thought ever taught, number 223. Number 2023, the realest thought ever taught, number 2023. I had to check it with my pastor, y'all, because I was like, this can't be right. But he was like, mm. so this one has been verified, y'all. Decrees don't require a prayer life. They are based on biblical principle. This is one of the reasons why the wicked prosper. And many Christians do not. Decrees require a belief system. We pray and hope for change. They believe in change and state the future. They believe in the change and they state the future. Now, here is the difference. We receive our reward in heaven. They receive their reward right here on earth. But... There's no reason for us to go without just because we're going to get a reward in heaven. Because the scripture says you can have it if you release it. If you loose it, they've already let it go. So if the heavens have already said, I've let go everything you ever wanted, I've released it. But you are bound for some reason, so you can't release it. You don't lose it for yourself. How do we decree? State what you desire the way you tell your kids what to do. Call it by name. You know how you talk to them. One thing for sure and two things for certain. My book will sell millions of copies. I ain't even wrote the book. Call it as though it's already happened. My husband treats me like a queen and I reciprocate. All of these things, baby, I don't know what you're talking about because everything up in here is paid for. Everything paid for. I ain't got no bills. So I don't know. I can do things like this because I don't have any bills. I walk around bill free. I'm debt free. You got to call that thing as though it's already going on. Yes, no, I don't have a problem with MLGW because they paid in full. No, I don't have a problem with the bank. I already got all the loans I need and I've already paid them back. I can pay them back today in cash if I wanted to. It's up to me. No, I don't have a problem with this house, but if I did, I already know where my new one's located. Yes, I can have this. Yes, I do want it, but I'm not just wanting it, I'm calling it. A difference in a prayer and a decree is you pray to God. You decree to stuff. I pray to God. I decree stuff. You're going without because you won't call on your stuff. You don't have it.
because you don't call it by name. Even when you pray, you do it silently. You have to say the words out of your mouth. He said, say to it. You can say to the mountain, be thou removed. He didn't say, pray to the mountain. He didn't say, ask the mountain to move. You got something that's on you so hard right now, you can barely stand up. You won't loose yourself of it. It's like a backpack. It's holding you down. Every time you stand up, your shoulders go down. The reason why your shoulders going down is because instead of you loosening in the crank, I'm not going through this no more. T.D. Jake said something. He said, I walked through my house and I told myself, this ain't me. This is not how I'm living. This is not my life. I'm better than this. When was the last time you told yourself, I'm better than this? I know I'm supposed to have more. Call the more. Name the more. Go for the more. Get the more. You got to believe and receive things. Make a decree. Stop asking for stuff that belongs to you. God, if it be your will, he already said, it's already loose. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to call on it. I'm waiting for you to demand it. I'm waiting for you to go get it. Stop talking about what you used to have and get the stuff I got for you. I'm going to tell you something I've said more than once at this church. There have been a many day I've asked Jesus to go to hell and get my stuff. I gave that stuff away. I knew I gave it away. I realized I gave it away. And Jesus is the only person that can go into hell and come back out. You got to ask Jesus. I need you to go to hell for me. I need you, Jesus, go to hell and get my stuff back. Not only get it back, make it better. What you going to do with that old stuff? Baby, they done updated it. They update the system of computers almost every 30 days. What do you want some old stuff for? Call on your stuff, but call of it on the update. I want the updated version of this. I've already had the old. Why you keep chasing this old dude around? Call on the update. God, I'm done chasing him. I'm done with him. I want the updated version, God. I want the one you fixed. Ain't y'all tired of fixing people? I'm not your mama. I'm tired of watching women try to fix men and men try to fix women. If they mama and daddy didn't raise them, don't take on the job. CPS got a thousand kids sitting over there that didn't nobody take the time to raise. You gonna take them on and raise them all up. If I'm not raising you from down here, I sure ain't raising you from up here. You got to start calling on stuff and make sense with it. I want this dude standing on the corner, no job, no car, nowhere to lay his head, but that's the one I want. What you going to do with him? You struggling now. You really going to struggle with an extra mouth to feed. Stop calling on stuff that don't make sense. You need to think it through. Don't show up to vision board at night with no thoughts. You need to know, what is it that I really want for me? In order to decree it, you got to be able to call it by name. I told you I got a daughter that named her kids at the age of 15. You got to be able to name your stuff. Pastor Connor named this church before he ever had this church. You got to have enough sense to name stuff that you ain't got. Oh, you, girl, I heard you was broke now. I ain't broke now. I might be temporarily out of cash. My funds haven't hit the bank yet. You better change the way you conversate. Change the way you talk about stuff. You got to say things that make better sense than the stuff you be saying. Oh, man. MLG, man, I don't give them no credit. None. MLGW doing their job. If I go to work and do mine, I can pay them. But my plan is I am not going to continue to go to work when I can do this at home. 
I can get paid to do nothing. God is like, I can give it to you. All you got to do is ask for it. When do you ask? Better yet, it's your stuff. Call it. Let me tell you something. Jeremiah is my son. If he was standing by you and I told him to come and stand by me, do you think I'm going to be real sweet about it if he don't move? Jeremiah, come over here and stand by mama. And he keeps standing where he's standing. Jeremiah, come over here and stand by mama. He keeps standing where he's standing. Jeremiah, stand by mama. See, you asking. Tell it. Tell it it's yours. Stop asking for stuff that belong to you. See, if you treat everything like you treat them kids, you wouldn't go without nothing. Treat everything like you treat that no good for nothing dude that's laying on your couch right now. Treat them like that dude. If you treat them like him, you'll have some stuff. Baby, you mind. Tell her you mind while he on the phone with her. Instead of saying, tell her to come and get you in this stuff. Tell her, since she on the phone, pay your phone bill and come get you in all your raggedy stuff that I paid for. Don't take nothing that I got a receipt for. You got to stop being okay with well enough. At some point in time, you got to say to yourself, I am done with this. See, when I hear you say you're tired, but you go back home to it, I know you're not. Because when you're tired, you leave it. You walk out with the coat on your back. If you're really tired, you get a new address. I'll let him have that couch. You can have the couch, the address, all of this. Because, baby, I'm out. You should be planning your future while he taking a nap. You should be planning your future while they laying up on you. I called you. Where were you? I, I, oh, oh, I, I stayed at dude's house. Yeah, stay at his house tonight, too. Make that a permanent situation because it seemed to be that it works out well for you. See, if you could tell stuff, like, see, you talk crazy to us. If it was pastor, you talk crazy to him. You don't know my man. Blah, 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 blah. Talk to him like you talk to the pastor about him when he's trying to help you. Long time ago, I heard pastor kind of say, treat me like you treat them dudes that don't love you. Treat me like you treat them dudes that don't love you. Treat yourself better than you've been treating yourself. How are you okay with, it's just all right. He getting himself together. If you ain't together, don't know my number. I'm together. Ain't you start tired of being the only one that's together in this situation? You ain't together. I'm just trying to get it together. Look, dude, I have an expiration date on getting it together. You were getting it together in 2022. You were getting it together in 2021. You weren't quite ready in 2020. You were thinking about it in 2019. It's 2023. I'm decreeing me a new me and a new somebody else. Baby, I want a new me and a new boo. You got to stop being all right. If they ain't ready, you be ready. Go ahead. Walk it like you talk it. Move it. They don't want these problems because if you went in there and talked like you should talk, they wouldn't keep playing with you. People play with those that they know gonna go back on their word. Oh, I'm gonna go over here. I'm sleeping on my mama couch for a few days. I'm gonna call her up a few days. I'm gonna tell her I love her and how much I miss her. And she'll be done let me come back. Baby, block them. Better yet, get a new phone. New phone, new number, new address. When you see them in the street, act like you ain't never met them before. Let folks approach you and you act crazy. You act like you don't know me, sir. Sorry, I'm gonna need you to step back because uh, this is really strange. Like, I don't know you. I, people would think somebody bothering me. Ma'am, you okay? I don't know this guy. I 
used to be our man. I've never met him. I have never met him. Because the truth is, you haven't. This some strange dude. He never got to get to know, he never took the time to get to know you because he don't want you. And you the one holding on to him for dear life. He'll go sleep on another girl's couch if she call him up. You all right with it. They run stuff in your house that you can't run. They got beer in your refrigerator, food you can't touch, a remote that you don't have, on a TV that you bought. The kids scared to walk around. Mama and daddy can't call you. Because if I talk too loud, it irritates them while he's sleeping. This is a situation. And you are right with it. I'm sick of this. If you was really sick of this, you wouldn't have time to say you were sick. Folks that's really sick, if you sick and tired, like you say you sick and tired, call on what you really want. The problem is you really want them. You want them to act right. He ain't got no act right in him. Now you tell your kid, you just ain't got no act right. That's right. You know his daddy didn't have no act right. You didn't think that was gonna fall down the line? Generational curses are real. You know his daddy wasn't no good. You didn't think that that was gonna hit you? You laying up, oh yeah, wait a minute. How is it that you okay with going up on a child, but you never went up on a dude? You slept and got this baby, and now you mad at the baby for acting like the guy you got him from. I don't walk around with an attitude about anything my kids do that my husband claims. I love him. So that means I love his way. I don't love everything they do. If he claim it, I'd be like, mm, well, you came out all right. You came out all right. I'm going to have to trust and believe they're going to come out all right. I don't claim none of their ways. I don't care how crazy they act. I don't claim it. I'd be like, all right, I'm going to get that. Because mm -mm. I told you I don't forgot about my past. I let him claim everything he want about them kids. Yeah, I used to. That's a, that's, this is his key word. That's my sin. Yeah, dude, I ain't got none. I ain't got nothing. I'm good. I'm clear on sins. So I guess that is your sin. I'm going to pray for you and them. Y'all got to stop being okay with it. If we would speak it, if we would walk into it, if you claim it, you can obtain it. All you got to do is put your mouth on it. If you want a better child, stop calling them stupid. Stop calling them dumb. Stop calling them bad. That's one thing I never allow people to do is call my son bad. I'd be like, no, nah, he's not bad now. He's very active. He's very active. You got you to gotta change your wording. The reason why you can't change your wording is because your vocabulary is limited. Your vocabulary is limited because you ain't never asked for nothing and received it because you don't know how to call on stuff. I'm going to call you up and you don't answer the phone, but I really need you. Maybe I'm going to blow your phone up. I'm going to blow it up. Now, if a judge got tired from a woman coming back and forth to him over and over, you think God don't get tired? I'm going to give it to her because I'm about sick of her. I'm about, I want God to get sick of me. I'm sick of her calling this thing. If it's not in her room, put it in there. I'm so sick of her calling on this. You get tired too quick. I asked for it yesterday. And I asked for it today, and I asked, I was asking for it last year. You were asking for it last year. I'm now telling you, call it. That's different. Asking has a question mark on the end. Calling has an exclamation point on the end. Call it. If you really want it, you're going to make a decree. Y'all be blessed.